they've got two of the greatest features you'd ever want in an insect. One, their walking stick, and two, they're poisonous. So uh, the real trick is not gonna be getting sprayed by acid in the face. Should be fun. I'm in Southern Louisiana working with Zachary Gray, and we're on the hunt for some of the strangest creatures this area has to offer. Zach's a local wildlife expert, and I'm hoping to learn as much as I can from him on this next leg of my journey. Today, what we're looking for isn't necessarily rare, but it's a difficult to find creature with an incredibly toxic secret. And to find it, we're gonna have to head deep into Big Branch Marsh. Like Honey Island, this is a huge, huge expanse of habitat full of all kinds of crazy stuff that I've never seen before. You know, we're here looking for the two-striped walking stick, a super poisonous, super crazy looking walking stick species, but there's a lot of stuff that we could find here. In these pine savannas, you can find some of the rarest animals in the state, pygmy rattlesnakes, oak toads. Our main target here is the walking stick. It's, it's not exactly a rare animal, but it is kind of a really neat, uh, less encountered gem of Louisiana. If we find any of these cool animals while we're out here, that'd be, a, that'd be an awesome bonus too. Now, it's tough enough to find a camouflaged insect. You have to look really closely at everything you pass by, hoping that something just looks a little bit off and maybe you'll find your walking stick. But the thing is, this marsh terrain is pretty difficult. Uh, I fall into this grass, don't jump after me because uh, sometimes when you get back up in it, it just kind of floats. This, this stuff can genuinely be dangerous because if you're just walking and you think there's land and there's a drop off, you'll just whoop, go straight under and you will not be able to get back up. And if it's mud, you'll just sit there stuck, just half your body above it, which can be very dangerous. My dad found somebody half covered one time, just like out in the marsh. He's like, what are you doing? He said, oh, hey, I'm stuck. He's like, well, why aren't you calling for help? He's like, ah, I just figured someone come along. He's like half stuck and he couldn't move at all and it was just hilarious. Like he helped him out, but it was pretty jarring to see. <laughs> well, that's real reassuring. Tromping through the wetland um, is like walking through a minefield, only the, the mines are just pitfalls that could suck you down, you know, many feet underneath. You know, th this, this marsh could literally be a death trap. Uh, I'm following as close behind Zach as I can, hoping that he doesn't fall in. Um, and hoping that the ground that I'm stepping on is just as stable as when he stepped on it. Another problem is, of course, we're in, we're in southern Louisiana, so you gotta be mindful of cottonmouths. Now, I definitely feel a, a lot more comfortable in venomous snake territory. I, I definitely, you know, learned what I needed to learn over the last few days, but there's still this level of you can't get complacent, you know, I have to be constantly checking. So so it's slow going here in the marsh, you know, every step you take, it's like, okay, first check that there's not a moccasin there before you step, then, you know, kind of ease your way onto that spot, make sure you don't sink, and then you can check and see if there's walking sticks nearby. This is definitely a challenging search in and of itself. The deeper into the marsh we go, the more the habitat changes. We're looking for tall, dead trees, otherwise known as snags, where these toxic walking sticks will be hiding in between the bark and the wood. In this treacherous environment, it's definitely difficult to keep up, but Zach knows exactly one spot where we can find these walking sticks. As long as I don't lose sight of him, I should be able to find my quarry. Yep, this is it. I see him. See him? Yep. Okay. Alright, hold on. No way. How far up? No way! Wait, that's two! There's, there's a lot more than Whoa, two. Whoa, what, there. what, holy- There's gonna be a stack. There's so many of them! What, there's like- One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, hold on, that is, that is insane! There's like, males, females, they're, I, I, wow, there's, the works. Look at these guys. This is nuts. This is an insect I have been looking for for years, honestly, on this channel. If I had it my way, there'd be a lot more walking stick videos on here. Not because they do amazing, but because I absolutely love these animals. What I actually have here, there's two of them. It's a male and a female. I'm careful to keep it away from my face because if they get defensive, they can spray poison. 
Right here in my hand is probably the one of the most poisonous walking sticks in the world. Now, you might be wondering, Spencer, is, is this really a good idea, handling a poisonous walking stick? Well, probably not, but I, I still want to show you just how cool this animal is. Now, they're poisonous, um, not venomous. We've been working with a lot of venomous animals here on the trip. As a wildlife person, I really need to be able to work with venomous spiders and snakes and things. But a lot of people discount that there's stuff that's poisonous out there too. The poison these guys pack is pretty powerful. It's been described as having molten lead in your eyes. The pain is supposedly absolutely insane. And these guys are accurate too. They can spray a few feet away from them with pretty good accuracy. So this is one of those things you definitely don't want to mess around with this animal too much. And so far they're not spraying poison or anything, which is really good for me because getting that in my eyes would be very unpleasant. Fortunately, just like handling anything else, a, a spider or a centipede, what I'm allowing them to do is just walk around completely unhindered on my hand and doing very little to actually disturb them. As far as they're concerned, I'm just a surface for them to sit on. Walking Stick's primary defense mechanism is their camouflage. Their whole goal is to basically avoid a confrontation with a predator by looking like a stick. You know, that's why they're called stick bugs. They look like sticks. With Walking Sticks, they actually have these hinged little grooves in their almost their armpit here that allows them to do is they can use that groove to get their front legs completely straight out in front of their head which makes them look even more stick like if their coloration wasn't enough that little feature allows them to super blend in with their environment what is kind of interesting here is the unlike a lot of other walking stick species this the southern two line has an incredible amount of sexual dimorphism the little the little teeny one on the back is actually the male and these are both full grown What's funny about that is scientists aren't actually sure if the males even eat as adults. They observed females to eat, but they didn't actually observe any males eating. So it's possible that the males only purpose as adults is to mate. Even when they're not mating, it's pretty difficult to find solo males in the wild. You're gonna find these males hanging onto the females back. So you can say they're pretty clingy. But but here here's of course the, the question that I get asked a lot is, if I find this in my yard, am I in trouble? Frankly, no. Um, these are gonna be an insect that's gonna spend most of their time away from humans. Um, occasionally they'll show up on like a, a screen door or something on your backyard. But I got these guys to spray once while I was handling them. And it wasn't even like a huge spray. I, I don't even know if I got it on camera. But they're a pretty mild mannered animal. So I, I would say, if you find a two-stripe walking stick in your yard, admire from a safe distance, like you would with a spider or a centipede or a snake. These guys are about as non-threatening as it gets. These walking sticks have an incredible chemical defense, but there's actually one little invertebrate that I've interacted with that has probably the most sinister chemical defense I've ever seen. This video right here, you'll see a crazy millipede I found that actually uses hydrogen cyanide. Yes, you heard that right as a defense. Hope I'll see you next time, but until then, don't forget to get out there and find your adventure.